y'all it's Steffi and welcome back to my channel I wanted to do a friendly sisterly advice video and our topic comes from sin ASMR how do you know whether a company is the one finding that perfect company perfect job perfect team as you can see I'm doing a lot of air quotes perfection I'm about to get done with my tax internship and I like the company but I'm not sure about the people at my office I don't dislike them, but I also don't look forward to seeing anyone. At times, it gives me a bit of anxiety just joining into our team meetings. Did anyone else experience this and then get more comfortable as a full-time? Would you recommend I try an internship at another company? Also, I don't love tax, but I also don't hate it. I do feel like I need more people interaction. In terms of like when you're early in your career, if you are not sure if you like a certain field, like right now, it doesn't sound like you hate it, but you don't love it. I would say give it another year and see because an internship you only literally see like a sliver of the actual job and of the subject matter that you're going to be dealing with. So give it a little bit more time before you know you make a decision either way just because I don't feel like that's enough experience to say yes I don't like it, yes I like it. If after a year you find that you still don't like it, it's not interesting, then definitely try something else. Try audit um, if your firm will allow it. When it comes to like you like the company but you're not sure about the people and you feel anxiety when you join team meetings or some team meetings, um, I definitely have felt that way before. Like, I've had situations where I like the company and then I originally liked the people but then you know as you are there for a while and then you interact with certain other people and you start seeing certain cultures and stuff like that, you know, when you're there for a short amount of time, it's kind of like that honeymoon period, right? You you don't see like the realness of things until you've been there for a little bit of time. I've definitely felt that. Either I don't feel like I belong, I don't feel like I add value. You know, you just don't feel that sense of community or belonging. Um, I've definitely felt that way before. And um, I've definitely felt that way in every job too, let me just say. In every job I felt that way, especially in the very beginning, because you're still like, it's a, it's a learning curve, right? You're, you're learning about the company, you're learning about your job, you're learning about how to work with different people. So I feel like that discomfort is very normal and you have to just continuously tell yourself you're gonna get past it, like just give yourself time the more that you are there the more that you you know just focus on the work and of building relationships it'll get better over time so just because you feel that a little bit right now it doesn't mean that's going to be that way for the rest of your career or for however long you're with the company i definitely felt that way even with my current job i'll link some of my early vlogs um, from this job so you can kind of hear my struggle. I definitely felt that way. I felt like, you know, uncomfortable because I didn't really know anyone. I didn't really know the company. It's kind of like when you are in school or in college for the first time and you just feel like an outsider. That's very normal um, at any job, especially in the very beginning. You just have to like have that mindset that it's normal and you're gonna get past it. You just need to be patient and let time pass learn as much as you can and really the best way to get past that at least for me is to focus on the work like that's always been kind of my thing whenever i feel distracted with things right now distracted with covid and the pandemic and our economy going to shit and people getting furloughed and people who i love being affected by things you know obviously all of that <laughs> all of that's going on in my brain if you need like a one thing to focus on focus on the work and of learning what you're supposed to be learning on the job. I get kind of caught up sometimes in more of like the politics and of the people aspect. Like I, I know in the beginning of this job, I felt really uncomfortable because I was like, I don't know anyone. You know, I wish I was like this person who knew who to go to. They seemed like they belonged. And it took me minimum six months to feel like I belonged. You know, I started making connections with people. After a year, I definitely felt like it. Like now, especially in this job, I definitely feel like it. I definitely feel like I'm happy to go to work. I have people who I'm happy to see. Um, you know, I have a good support system, but it, it definitely took time. Building of that kind of self-confidence, which takes time and it takes practice and it takes constantly telling yourself and reminding yourself and rechecking your mindset, you know, to continue to get past these difficulties right now. And remember that when I started this new job, I had already had about seven years of work experience. I had experience practicing this, but that's not to say that it wasn't still a struggle for me. Glad that I have that knowledge um, 
so that I'm able to get past it and kind of like coach myself through those hard times. And third, let's get into the juicy part of this video, okay? I loved the question about how do you know that a company is the one? And from my perspective, personally, over the one, two, three, 10 different jobs that I've had since I started working, you know, um, at a young age, let me just tell you, and, and hopefully this will help you in your mindset, that there is no such thing as a perfect company or knowing that it's the one. I'm not trying to be negative, but I just want you to know like there's no such thing as a perfect company where the company is amazing, your boss is amazing, the people that you work with are all amazing, you know, and you're just loving everything. I think eventually it'll get there at some point in time and for a moment in time, certain or maybe a span of time, it'll feel like things are just clicking and it's like, you know, everything is just exactly how you want it, which is awesome. And those moments, you need to cherish them and savor them and really like be in those moments. But like anything in life, things ebb and flow. Nothing stays the same. So even if you find like that perfection in this moment, maybe it's a month, maybe it's years. At some point in time, it's, you know, it's just how life is. You have your highs, your lows, and then everything in between, you know? So you just have to know that. Thankful and grateful and um, really enjoy and be present in the, mo in the moments that are great. And then the moments that aren't that great, you just have to get through them, um, keep pushing past them, keep having your grit, and keep motivating yourself to get through whatever it is that you're getting through to make it to the other side. For me, when I look for my job satisfaction, or whether I want to take a job at a certain company, I go back to my wish list of job um, requirements. And I've talked about this in other videos. I'll link it here in the cards uh, when I was going through my job change, how to find a new job, and how to make like a decision to take one job over another. And one of those things that really helps me is my like career wish list. You know, it's basically what am I looking for in my career, growth opportunities, a mentor, certain amount of pay, compensation, certain level, job duties, travel requirements, benefits, whatever those, those wish list items are. And then being able to refer back to them and say, you know, this job has five of the 10. This job here has two of these 10 things. This one here has like eight of these 10 things. You know, it kind of makes it a little bit easier for you to make the decision about this company seems like it hits more of my wish list items than this one over here. But then of course you're going to have to like decide on which one do you think sounds better um, and, and is going to be more beneficial for your life. Definitely put together your wish list of what you want out of your career, out of your job, out of um, who you work with. Even though a company may sound amazing, it's the people who are going to impact you on a day-to-day -day basis. Even if you're at a company that is awesome, has so many benefits, pays for your gym, pays for your meal every single day, pays you a lot of money, but then you go and you literally just hate being there because of the people, like that job is not worth it, at least in my opinion. But also keep in mind that, like I said, if you're new to the job, new to the environment, you have to give it a little bit of time. Maybe it's just that rough period of when you first start a job. So don't make your decision based off of the first, you know, first month, first week, um, even the first like two, three months, you know, give it a little bit of time to see, is it really the people or, it, or am I just kind of going through that kind of learning curve? I think that's really important. Don't make a assumption just like on a very short amount of time. I think you need a little bit more time unless you have like real concrete reasons like people are bullying you or you're on a team where they're excluding you or excluding other people and you can't get off that team there's obviously other factors so for example something sounds like it's just perfect and the most perfect setup i've talked about this in one of my um, vlogmas videos which i will link in the cards where i left a job that i had had for six to nine months to go work uh, at another job that sounded perfect. Everything about it was perfect, amazing. Like, and you can listen to that story time and obviously it did not turn out that way. <laughs> it was definitely not perfect. For me, I feel like if something's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. You know what I'm saying? Like there's those one-off situations where that is not the case, but I think in general, you know, life is an imperfect things. I feel like it really matters 
the people that you work with, especially those that you work with closely on a day-to-day -day basis. So like your direct supervisor, the team around you, um, how the direct supervisor manages people. Are they a good manager? Are they a mentor or like, are they a leader or are they not? Are they a drill sergeant or a tyrant? Do they create like a good environment, a positive environment, or are they causing drama? Are they pitting people against each other? So for me, the person who I'm going to work with directly and who's going to be my boss, that is one of the most important decisions and one of the most important factors that I use to make a decision on whether I'm going to go to a certain job, um, an engagement team, if I had the choice, of course. <laughs> then I look at what does the existing team look like? If you are a new person going into an already established like team culture, you're going to feel left out. It, it's just how it is. Those people have worked together for a long time and then it's kind of creating a new normal kind of environment. Hopefully when you do that and you go onto a team like that, those people will be flexible um, and inviting and welcoming and change kind of the dynamic because there's a new factor in there, you, right? Hopefully that's the case and that's, that's the case that I know me and my current team that we try to do. We, that is our goal when there's someone new who comes on our team, we try to like evolve our team dynamic. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you have to have patience there and then also hopefully the, that team is in that mindset where they want to you know, integrate you. But sometimes you go on, get onto teams who are not like that. You never really know until you're in a job and you're around those people and you see how those people interact with each other. If you see how those people talk about one each other, is it good, is it positive, or is everyone talking about each other behind their backs in a negative way? Those are things you don't get to see until you're actually like a team member or you're actually there. The reason I bring that up is because when I'm looking for a job or whether I want to stay somewhere or not stay somewhere, that's what I look at. I could potentially go and find another job right now that I would be making more money at, but at the same time, like I have no desire to do that because I love the team that I'm on, the people that I work with, and the people who I interact with regularly. Like I, that is something that I've been wanting for a long time. And I don't want to lose. I want to be there. And um, so for me, like I have no outside incentives or no reasons to look elsewhere. Whereas you know, when you start looking for another job, usually it's not just because you want more money. Usually it's because there's something that eventually over time makes you not feel happy to go to work. You know, that tight stomach feeling. And it happens every now and then, don't get me wrong, or it might happen for like maybe a couple of weeks because of tight deadlines or whatever it is, but it shouldn't be the, the essence of your feeling when you go to work. And at that point when it starts getting that way and it's a repeated thing, then definitely it's, it's time to start looking for something else because life is short and it's um, valuable and you don't wanna waste it on something like that. It's a balancing act for sure. So you definitely need to give it time. Can you make an, an informed decision and not just a gut reaction kind of decision? How do you like working with your direct supervisor? How do you like the people around you? Do you feel like you're um, able to get mentored and you're being given opportunities, are you able to speak up and, and ask for those opportunities? And if you do, will you be considered for them? Those are the things you need to start thinking about. And it's not just kind of like a quick reaction to something. That's kind of how I know that a job is the one. It's easier to have kind of this um, choice, like what I'm describing to you guys. It's easier as you progress in your career. Sometimes you have to go through those shitty times until you can find the next opportunity. Um, I know I definitely had to suffer through it, through situations like that for months, even up to a year, until I made sure that I was in a good position to move on to the next thing. And that's another discussion for another day about how to like, you know, deal with your mindset when you're going through something like that. I, I have lots of videos on that. I'll, I'll link a bunch of them for you guys when I was dealing with it myself uh, recently, past few years. Um, not at this job, but at my last job. In the beginning of your career, you may not have that flexibility, but as you progress in your career, as you build your confidence, your skill set, um, you will have more of, an, of a choice as you go on in life. And then of course, like I said, everything changes. As of right now, I'm really happy, but you know what? Um, changes are always around the corner. So like I said, enjoy the moments that are good and um, use the not so good moments to grow and to learn. Um, and just to become more of a diamond because you know what? 
Y'all know what I'm gonna say, pressure creates diamonds. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. I hope it kind of gave you some food for thought. If you need some friendly sisterly advice, leave them in the comments below. With that being said, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. It definitely really helps me out. It shows support for my channel. And then it also gets this content out to people who are looking for it. So I greatly appreciate that. If you're not already part of our subby fam, please be sure to subscribe because we would love to have you. Stay safe. Stay healthy and positive, enjoy your journey, and I'll talk to y'all in my next video. If you hear Juicy snoring, it's because she's right underneath y'all snoring. Here's Juicy in her little donut, and as you can hear, she's really having a good nap. Anyways, okay, let's just do this, because you know we got time for this. Oh, I missed the garbage. I'll fix it later. Sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. First of all, let me just say, I look strange. Obviously, I don't have eyelash extensions anymore because hashtag quarantine life. Secondly, yes, my face is slightly swollen on this side. If you're part of the InstaFam, you know, but I had a root canal that got infected from many years ago. It had to be redone. Anyways, it made my face swell and I'm on antibiotics. Swelling's going down. It's not fully down, but y'all should have seen me. I was like a little chipmunk saving one of my acorns <laughs> for later to snack on. I pushed past it because who cares how I look? Because that's not the point of the video. So stop staring at my swollen cheek and just listen to the words coming out of my mouth, okay? Quarantine life has made me go crazy a little bit. So anywho, and sorry, you guys are gonna hear Juicy because she's snoring. She's snoring up a storm <laughs> and it's hot, sorry. It's about 90 something degrees up here in y'all and you know what, I'm trying to cover up my tank dress because I'm trying to be professional up in here, but it'd be hot, okay? Let me get some water. I did want to say very quickly that thanks to my friend Katie Thomas CPA, me and her had a conversation this week and it was really inspiring because I don't think I've told you guys this. Over the past few years, I've thought about like, how can I pursue like my passion? I'm considering um, trying out being a career coach. I feel like I give you guys uh, you know, friendly sisterly advice a lot and I would like an opportunity to try out more one-on-one -on -one specialized, specialized, um, more individualized kind of advice. So if you're interested in me potentially being your career coach, maybe we could try out a month or something and see how that goes. Shoot me a, an email or a DM or something and then we can try to see if maybe I'd be a good fit for what's going on in your life. If we would have good rapport and if it would be a good fit, I would dedicate specific time individually and specifically for you. Let me know if you're interested in that and then we'll just see how it goes.